Hi, we are in analytics and we're going to create our new Google Analytics 4. You're going to need two things. You're going to need access, admin access to your Google Analytics account, and you're going to need a tag manager account, and you're going to need uh, publishing permissions. Those are the two things we need to get started, but we're going to dive right in really quick, right? Okay, you're in your Google Analytics. We're going to go over to our admin and that's clicking on that little cog bottom left hand side in here you're going to see the account the property and the view now in the new google analytics the google analytics 4 we are not going to have the view which is pretty interesting okay so there are two ways to do this now first let me just say one thing if the creative property is kind of a lighter blue and you can't click on it, it means you don't have the right permissions to move forward. So, and if you don't have the right permissions, you probably won't see the upgrade to Google Analytics 4 in the property column here. There are two ways to get Google Analytics 4. And I'm gonna show you both ways right now with two different accounts. In case you've done one thing and not the other, right? It really depends on where you start in this whole process. Okay, say you're in Google Analytics. You've heard you need to upgrade to Google Analytics for it. You log in and you decide to use this button versus creating a new property, which you could do. So when you click on the upgrade to GA4 at in the property column, right? you click on that it toggles a new window pane you're gonna see that it says not connected here it's upgrading to google analytics 4. what it means that you're going to be collecting data and that your universal analytics so your other property isn't affected and remains unchanged so you'll still get all your data in there you'll be collecting new data in the google analytics 4. so you will see if you use tag assistant as a chrome extension you will see Universal Google Analytics and Google Analytics 4 as tags. So we're going to click on the get started button. And you see, before I do this, you see this, this little down arrow here. If you already had a property you know, that you just needed connecting, this is where you would do it. But I will show you that on the second round. So we're going to click the blue button, get started. Then a little pop-up window is going to show up and this wizard is going to help us do a couple things. So there are some pluses to doing it this way and, and a minus in my opinion. This is going to help you create a Google Analytics for again, it's saying, don't worry, your other analytics, your original property is not affected, saying it's going to copy over the basic settings and that it's going to activate these enhancements. So your enhanced measurement, that's why we're doing this so that our marketing team can do a really good job. Okay. So we're going to create property. And uh, when you hit that button, a new window will open up and here we are. And you'll see, you can go down and look through all of these sections. So collections, we're going to go through, we're going to go through property settings, linking audiences and conversions. Now know that you can go through all of these in that other menu. So just so you know, all the, all the things that are down in the middle of the page here, the collections, property setting, linking, you can also get to by going through the menu over here. So all these take you to different places in here, like most of Google's properties. What we want to look at here is the tag installation. So we're going to want to click on our data stream. So as you can see, we clicked on, we're in tag assistant. We clicked on the section of collections, tag installation, clicked on the little greater than arrow came over here and we're in our data stream, which is also right here, right? That's how we get here. It jumps us around something to get used to. So it looks like we have a data stream already, but that's because of that little wizard. So the thing we're going to want to pay attention here is we're going to want to copy our measurement ID. Let me just draw some attention to that. Your measurement ID, we're going to copy this 
and we're going to put it in Tag Manager. But before we do that, let's just run through a couple things and then we'll come back, we'll copy this code and we'll go jump over to Tag Manager. In this page, if we want to see what we're tracking, we can click here and we can see all the things we're measuring. Now say I don't want to measure site search. I go over to this little cog and when I click on it, it opens enhanced measurements <laughs> and you can toggle on and off any of these things. Now we don't have site search, we will one day, but uh, we're gonna save it like this now. And you can track video engagement, file download, scrolls, page views, outbound clicks. So these were all things that we would have to do in Tag Manager before. Now they're automatic once you put one tag in there, but there's other things we like to track as well. So there is, uh, there is some additional stuff in Tag Manager. We're not going to get to that today, but there's lots we can get to. So you'll see that there's, you know, blue hyperlink text. So you can click on that and learn more and learn more. Always good to click around. Don't be afraid of the click. So there we are. That was data streams. So let's get out of here. Go back to our assistant. The uh, collections, all this just takes us to our data stream. Then if we go down to linking, we can link Google ads. We can talk about to find audiences. All these things will jump us around into crazy places that we don't want to be. So that's why the tag assistant isn't my favorite. You'll see that we are missing something here. We don't have a property view. We just have the properties. So when we click on the down arrow in our property, we can see we have a number of properties now, some with the G. A4 at the beginning, that's why I put it there. But you'll see this account now has these two properties. We want to look for the account that doesn't have the UA, the Universal Analytics. It is the second one. We're going to click on that to get into that property. So we can run through all the settings here. There's a couple things we want to do. We're going to go to data settings. So over to the left hand side under data streams, data settings and you're going to click on data collection in data collection. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable our Google data collection signals. So we want to click on that right hand side, get started. Uh, you'll see Google's advertising features here. You might want to look at those and update what you're saying in your privacy documents. So click get started from here. We're going to click on the continue. And if we decide later, let's do that quickly again. We're gonna click on get started and we're gonna look at cross device capabilities, more insightful and useful data, and then all existing advertising features are included. So lots of big changes. You can't really see them now, but if you look over on this side, the menu is even different, right? And Firebase is all about apps. So that's pretty neat. So we're going to click on continue, renew your data sharing settings. So if you click that little help uh, hyperlink text, uh, it took us here and it looks like we haven't updated our information and it hasn't been accepted. So we definitely want to do that. We want to accept. And then we accept and then we save, but let us go back, continue on our road. We were at data settings. So let's get back in there data collection. We clicked on and turned on this. So we're going to continue here, right? We're going to activate this. As you can see, we've enabled the data collection. The toggle is on. You could turn it off if you like. You can turn it back on. The other thing to do here is we acknowledged an update in Google Analytics in our account, but this is also user data collection acknowledgement. It's not, it's not pointed out to us that we have to do something here. So click here. And this basically says that you acknowledge uh, necessary privacy disclosures and rights from the end user for collecting data. Yes. So click, I acknowledge and you've accepted it, right? And you're probably thinking, well, should I click on other down arrows and click on other things? Yes, you should always click around. Like here, you can actually do add personalization to regions, kind of interesting. Yeah, so click around, don't be afraid of the click. You might actually find something you need. So data retention is next for the data settings. We're going to change our event retention to uh, 14 months, so it's either a year and two months or two months, select the length you want to you want to retain the data, right? So this is for marketing purposes. And so we just click save and bang, done, 
right? Now, we want to go back over and get that code. Remember that code we talked about a little while ago? So how would we do that? Well, we're going to go back into data stream, right? So we want to go to data stream. We want to get our measurement ID. So we're going to copy this and then we're going to hightail it over to tag manager and uh, add a tag. Just click on this copy button, copied, and then we're going to head over to tag manager. So come on with me. Here we are, tag manager. I use something called uh, a great suspender, which makes my tabs go to sleep uh, when I'm not using them, which is good. Okay, so here we are in Tag Manager. Now we're gonna find our container, right? We're looking for a container name, uh, No Hell Marking Labs, right? So we're gonna click on that. If you just have, you know, one website, you just see the container, but whatever you named it. So we're going to click on that. So here we are inside of tag manager and we're going to create a new tag. Over here we can add a new tag or we can add a new tag here. So either or pick one of those places. I'm going to add a new tag here. So a new window will open up and you're going to click on the first box tag configuration. Now a new uh, window slides open or a window pane and we are going to pick the Google Analytics for configuration, right? So just click on the Google Analytics for configuration. Here it is. We're going to paste that code in here. You make a tag and then we make a trigger. So then we're going to go down here and click on that. Now we are just going to choose our trigger, which is all pages. So click on that and then it'll bring us back here and you can see the trigger all pages. It's triggering all pages. Here's the tag and we need to name it. So naming conventions I like to keep similar to what we've been doing all along. So I would name this GA for, for configuration, right? And then click on that nifty save button over to the right-hand side top beside the beautiful three dots. So we're gonna click save. Okay, so now we pretty much have it all done. There's just one more thing now to do. Now you will go deeper on this if you wanna set up additional event tracking. So let us just click on the submit and we will have made our tag. Oh, that's right. We have to talk about our version name and uh, what we did. Let's add what we did with a descriptive name and a little description below it. So, and then we hit publish. Last beautiful thing we do on this is we click this button, submit changes, publish. I like this thing like no one's listening. We can see our version changes here. We can look down and see our history. Super exciting. So we have set up our Google Analytics 4. So our GA4, and we've done it with, done the configuration in Google Analytics and in Tag Manager. Now this doesn't include all the event tracking we want. So there is additional tracking that we would do, but in this video, this is what we're doing. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna quickly show you that there is a second way to do this. So if you're a marketer, stay tuned because maybe your client actually turn around and made a new property and they didn't realize that there was the setup wizard. So let's go back over to Google Analytics. And as you can see, we have those beautiful count the property and the view. So we know it's a universal analytics from that and also from the UA here. So let's create a property this time. We create a new property and opens it up and then we get to name the property. I figure there'll be a GA four and five and stuff in that. So that's why I'm doing the brackets. And this is uh, click next. Now, remember, we didn't have to do this. So this is the stuff that the wizard does for you, but you might want to have more control. Okay, so we're going to pick, this is a home and garden and its company size is one to two employees. And we are going to click on everything that is not app related. You could just click on everything and then click on that button create. And that's going to help us create that property. And now it takes us directly to our data stream where we actually set it up. Okay. So we're going to click on web, put in your 
website name and the name of your business. Again, we're going to see that we have options and what we're measuring. So you can click on that cog again, but we're just going to create the stream. Bang. Now we would go through all the same things. We would go grab our measurement ID, go put it inside tag manager. So we're going to skip those steps, but we have to do one final thing if we're doing it this way. So remember accounts been created. You didn't notice the tag assistant. So what do you do? We want to attach the two accounts together. Okay, so we want to go back because we want to attach the two accounts and we're in our universal analytics property of our account. We are going to click on that upgrade to G4. So here we are and say, now we want to upgrade to our GA4 only we've created a new property and not connected the two. So down here on the second pane, so this is the, where it's a little different. We click on the down arrow and we would pick a property to attach it to. And then we would hit connect properties. So we want to connect them both. So, and then we would see that we've been connected and it says, thanks for being an early adopter. And that's it.